This video is brought to you by Robotis with support from Send Cut Send. Hello, this is the part where I kill you. This is my latest attempt at building an animatronic version of Wheatley from Portal 2. Now, why did I spend hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars developing a high-tech moron? Well, a few years ago, I built a basic animatronic version of GLaDOS's head as she appears in Portal 2. Now, the next logical step was to build everyone's favorite intelligence dampening sphere. How hard could it be to build the robotic body of an advanced AI from a video game world where the laws of physics are merely a suggestion? Yeah, difficulty aside, I got to work and began designing my first version of Wheatley, Mark 1. You know, Mark 1 was a big boy at half a meter in diameter, scaled to match a bizarre five inch round LCD for his eye. Now, I learned a lot of the fundamental design challenges of translating Wheatley into the real world with this version. Most notably, at this larger scale, rigidity was a major issue, which meant it was a bit too wobbly and also hard to maneuver. I also discovered that it was kind of complicated to implement a Stewart platform in such a tight space and make it work reliably. So it was time for an upgrade. Mark II was a smaller and more lore accurate size and much more fully featured. This time, I added a mechanical iris and improved details like this passive inner rail. I controlled him with a needlessly complicated analog motion capture device, but it still wasn't good enough. This version was too complicated, and while people liked it, I knew that I could achieve more functionality with fewer parts. So I started planning upgrades for Mark III. For those of you who are possibly going to build a Wheatley based off my design, and by the way, yes, the files are free, you should know that Wheatley is a complicated machine. I never did a complete count of the bill of materials for Mark II, but it would be safe to say that it was over 500, as I spent a lot of time reducing the part count down to 444 in Mark III. That's 97 3D prints, 30 electronic components, 18 laser cut or milled parts, and 299 screws, bearings, and other pieces of hardware. Now, it would take hours for me to explain every way I simplified the design, but I mainly reduced the part count by fusing multiple 3D prints into one. Case in point, Wheatley's outer shell piece, which used to be seven separate parts in Mark II. This is a super awkward part to 3D print on a normal FDM 3D printer. No matter which way you orient it, it's always going to need support material. And even at low layer heights, it will have tons of stair stepping since it has such shallow curves. So I didn't print it and instead ordered the shells to be made out of laser centered nylon, which means it's tough. Mark II was made out of PLA, which is fine, but another benefit of a nylon shell is serious heat resistance. So Wheatley won't melt if I leave them out in the sun too long, which was a serious concern of mine for Mark II. While sintered PA-12 nylon is tough, it's not particularly rigid. So I designed key components like his outer chassis arcs and inner frame mount to be made out of metal. I don't have a machine that can cut through steel, but my new friends over at Send Cut Send do. So they helped me out and sent over these beautiful laser cut stainless steel and aluminum parts. They offer a ton of different material options. So when I needed thin, strong, and light components to attach Wheatley's faceplate, I had to order them out of titanium. I just, it's just so cool that's an option. Now, if you want to bring your own laser cut designs to life, you can check out Send Cut Send and use my link to save 10% off your next order. Now, two of the biggest issues I wanted to tackle in my Mark III design were cable management and motion control. But to explain how I did that, we need to talk about servos. 
My previous versions of Wheatley used common RC hobby servos for most of the mechanisms. Now this little RC hobby servo has a motor, gearbox, driver, and an analog potentiometer attached to the output shaft so that the little processor can tell the motor when to stop. You send it a digital signal, and the output shaft moves to a repeatable position. Simple, right? Sure. Basic hobby servos are great for things like RC planes and cars, or animatronics where space isn't at a premium. But my third version of Wheatley has 11 degrees of freedom, each driven by a servo motor. So if I were to have 11 RC servos hooked up to a relatively compact driver board, you can see how cluttered things get if they all have to route to one spot. But that's not the only problem. By and large, all these servos have a range of motion of 0 to 180 degrees. And the way you connect the output shaft is via different horns that attach via the spline. Now, I can install the horn any which way I want on the spline, which means that if I expect it to have that full range of motion, but mount it towards the end of its range of motion and send a command to move to 180 degrees, I won't have that full range of motion. Now I can zero it out to a known position like 90 degrees before installing it, but the only way to know that I've done that is to manually do that for each and every motor every time I assemble any mechanism. Needless to say, that's a chore and prone to error. So what if instead of a rat's nest of power, ground, and signal wires in parallel, I could daisy chain my motors together? What if instead of a limited range of motion, I had motors that can move 360 degrees or more with accuracy and precision? I don't have to wonder, because the solution is right here. This is a Dynamixel. Dynamixels are smart actuators made by Robotis, and these are a serious upgrade compared to a hobby servo. Each one gives me feedback on position, voltage, acceleration, velocity, and more. I have 11 Dynamixel X-Series servos in Wheatley. One for the mechanical iris, two more for the pan-tilt action of his inner eye, one for each eyelid, one for each of his handles, two more for the pan-tilt of his face, another for roll, and last but not least, one big boy to pitch the whole inner chassis. I paid for all these servos, and I would buy them again, because they've saved me so much time and made the design process considerably easier. I'll dive more into the nitty gritty of the technical aspects of the Dynamixel platform in my future Mark III tutorial video. But if you're interested in learning more about Robotis and their robotic solutions, check them out via the link below. Now in past iterations, I really wanted to incorporate a Raspberry Pi inside Wheatley's main eye so that I could swap out irises and thus personalities on the fly, as well as program him any which way I wanted. And while it did technically work, the eye is really hard to access, and let's be honest, I don't need a full operating system to what ultimately amounts to blinking an LED. So I ditched the Pi and kept it simple with an LED ring light instead and mounted it behind a printed version of his eye. Simple and effective. Now with the Pi gone, I needed another main controller. So I settled on this ESP32 module with a built-in LCD, which means I have a lot of connectivity options. But in the spirit of keeping things simple, I'm using the Bluetooth capabilities of the ESP32 to puppet him in real time with the PS3 controller. Audio is handled by a separate Teensy 4.1 that is the voice clip stored on a micro SD card. The ESP32 sends commands via serial, and the Teensy plays the audio via an amplifier and a 3 watt speaker, while also handling the real time brightness modulation of his LEDI. And that just about covers it for the upgrades from Mark III. Now, I know you've skipped ahead because this is the part you've all been waiting for. So without further ado, here are my best attempts at animating your most requested voice lines. Hello! Most test subjects do experience some uh, cognitive deterioration after a few months in suspension. Now, you've been under for quite a lot longer, and it's not out of the question that you might have a very minor case of serious brain damage. Most test subjects do experience some uh, cognitive deterioration after a few months in suspension. Now, you've been under for quite a lot longer, and it's not out of the question that you might have a very minor case of serious brain damage. What, what's wrong with being adopted? Uh, uh, well, um, lack of parents, number one. So, uh, and also, nothing. But so, well, some of my best friends actually are orphans, but... What's wrong with being adopted? Uh, uh, well, um, 
lack of parents, number one. So, uh, and also, nothing. But so, well, some of my best friends actually are orphans. But... You say to yourself, why should I jump in the pit? I'll tell you why. Guess who's down there? Your parents! You're not adopted after all. It's your natural parents down there in the pit. Should have mentioned it before, but I didn't. So jump on down and reunite with mummy and daddy. You're saying to yourself, why should I jump in the pit? I'll tell you why. Guess who's down there? Your parents! You're not adopted after all. It's your natural parents down there in the pit. Should have mentioned it before, but I didn't. So jump on down and reunite with mummy and daddy. So the last test was seriously disappointing. Apparently being civil is not motivating you. So let's, well, let's try her away, all right? Fatty, adopted fatty. Fatty, fatty, no parents. All right, so that last test was seriously disappointing. Apparently, being civil isn't motivating you, so let's, well, let's try her way, all right? Fatty, adopted fatty. Fatty, fatty, no parents. Fine, let the games begin. Fine, let the games begin. Holmes versus Moriarty. Aristotle versus Mashy Spike Plate. I am not a moron! Hello, this is the ball where I kill you. Hello, this is the part where I kill you. The Puppet Master! You're a puppet in a play, and I hold all the strings. And cards, still. Still got the card. Got the cards in one hand, and I got the strings in the other hand, and I'm making you dance like a puppet, playing cards. They say that the old caretaker of this place went absolutely crazy. Chopped up his entire staff of robots. All of the robots. They say at night you can still hear the screams. They say that the old caretaker of this place went absolutely crazy. Chopped up his entire staff of robots. All of them robots. They say at night you can still hear the screams of their replicas. All of them functionally indistinguishable from the originals. No memory of the incident. Nobody knows what they're screaming about. Absolutely terrifying. Though obviously not paranormal in any meaningful way. Now, this is a never-ending project, and I know it will never be 100% what everyone wants, but if anything, I hope it put a smile on your face. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Robotis for sponsoring this video. So if you want to support the channel and see more cool robotic and animatronic builds like this in the future, seriously, go check them out. By the way, they sent me a full set of motors for another core, so I think I should build Wheatley a friend, don't you? And as always, thanks to my supporters over on Patreon.